Good evening, everyone. This is Terry Selke. Uh, I'm sure many of you know me. <laughs> I hope it's warmer where you are than where I am. Right now, it's six degrees below on its way to 26 below, and tomorrow, a wind chill factor of minus 45 to 50 degrees. So wherever you are, I hope it's nicer weather. We're going to be talking tonight about accelerated orthodontics, which is frankly a fun thing we do in our office. It allows us to be able to treat people better, faster, with less discomfort, and frankly, more profitably too. And that's the subject of our program tonight. So let's get on with it. First, we should talk about what's the theory and the technology and so forth. What's the evidence on this whole thing? So let's start with how it works. It's all about cellular activity. Vibration at a specific frequency stimulates cellular dis differentiation and the creation of osteoblasts and osteoclasts. So vibration create more cells in bone. MOP, microosteoperforation, increases an inflammatory response. The net result is also more cells. More cells means faster movement. And also, with more cells, you have the potential for more physiologic movement of teeth, faster movement, less tissue damage, root resorption, create more bone where it was, didn't exist before, and less pain. Okay, so that's the concept behind this whole movement of accelerated orthodontics. So let's get into it. In our office, here's the, the basically dynamics of our journey. It began in 2013 when we started using Accelodent in our office as a, an acceleration device. And our first try with Accelodent began, we used it on all Invisalign cases and our practice is a sure smile practice. We used it on some fixed appliance cases. What was not known at that time and what I wanted to be known is, does this work? So since I teach at University of Illinois, we created a prospective study through the university on the use of Accelodent devices with and without uh, patients with or without Accelodent whether they be braces, cases, or aligner cases. And what you see here is the WIRB studies that showed those things. Now, what were the goals of that study? First of all, to measure treatment acceleration with the device. Did, in fact, the device accelerate treatment? Did the device allow us to treat patients with fewer visits? Were we able to evaluate pain? Yes, we were. We created a survey monkey, which basically was a series of five, 10 smiley faces where a patient would once a day get a prompt on their phone to click on the face that best represented how their teeth felt on that given day. So we did daily survey monkeys on discomfort, okay? And in order to keep patients in the study and, and, and ensure that they were doing what they needed to do in terms of reporting and so forth, we offered a cash incentive to all the patients in the, in the study to complete it. So that's how the study went. Now, the outcome of that study is what you're seeing on this slide. With Invisalign or fixed appliances, we were unable to measure any acceleration of treatment in the in the sample that had Accelodent versus the sample that did not. And also with Invisalign and fixed appliances, we saw no statistically significant reduction in pain. There was some reduction in pain, but it was not statistically significant. Well, that was kind of disappointing to us. But we also had some other problems with Accelodent as a product. First was we had significant breakage and they had a really bad repair system with Accelodent. It would take patients weeks to get a new unit and so forth. And in a clinical study, going a couple of weeks without a unit kind of affects adversely the outcome of the study. Uh, it was inaccurate in terms of tracking the hours that someone would actually be uh, using the device and so forth. And a big problem we had with Accelodent was patient disenchantment. They didn't like having a bite on that wafer for 20 minutes. It seemed endless to them. And the thought of doing it more than once a day was never gonna happen. So early in 2016, we gave up on Accelerate and switched to vPro5. And the perceived advantages as I saw it at that time was first was a convenience to patients. The, the device only was used for five minutes instead of 20 minutes. So patient acceptance was much greater. What we also liked was it a, was a one size fit all. With the uh, Accelodent product, there were three different sizes of wafers that, that a patient would bite on. This is one size fits all, we like that. 
it was much easier to teach a patient how to use it and much easier to track because they would bring their device in and we could download it uh, using the computer. We also had significantly greater or re reduced breakage with the VPro5 system as well. And of course, a big thing is the unit was less than half the price of what Excelident was. So with that as an idea, we, we began with VPro5, but obviously the question there was, is it any better than Excelident? So what we did at Illinois is repeat the study that I mentioned before, but this time we doubled the sample size uh, with not only aligners, but also with invis uh, with the bra brackets and sure smile system. And we also did one other thing that was different, which is in this particular group, we changed the, the rate at which aligners were changed from seven, day, seven days between aligners to four to see if this acceleration really allowed us to, to change aligners in a more frequent way. So what we found, preliminary findings you're seeing on this slide, definitely was more user-friendly. Patients used it once a day always, and, the, and those who were in the aligner study, we encouraged them to use it twice the day they changed their aligners. And what we discovered with them is measurably less pain based on the survey monkey results and so forth. We had less breakage, things were going along much faster, as you will see. So our Office V Pro 5 protocol involved these particular patients. We use V Pro 5 and we have for, for years on all aligner cases. Uh, they use it daily, as I said, twice a day on the day they change the liners. And our fee is built into the treatment fee. So the cost of the VPro5 is, is at no charge to the patient. What we're discovering is that with the VPro5, we have virtually no unseats. And that is a big plus for aligner treatment. Patients with SureSmile, uh, the patients that would get the device are those who are desiring faster treatment and adults, a lot of adults want faster treatment and also less discomfort. And that also would be a large percentage of the adult population. So, you know, the key for adults, what we do need with them histologically is more cells. So if we can create more cells, we're going to get the kind of results that we're looking for. So here's some information on VPro5. You know, one of the things is the, the device is assigned to the patient and the usage data is downloaded every time they come into the office. One of the nice things about the VPro5 unit is there's five different colors that you can see on the device that kind of tells you the status of the device, what's going on, so patients really can understand quickly how it works. And what are our findings supported? You know, are they supported by other clinical research? Well. You may have been reading in recent journals that there's a lot of articles uh, about the Excelident device, and none of them are very favorable about Excelident, how it works, and, and the, the other authors are finding the same things that we did in our clinical study. But there's actually some good articles that are, have come out in the literature regarding the Propel system, and many of them have, have come are, are, have been done at Harvard, at New York U, and different East Coast schools. Concept behind vibration is actually well known. You know, the Wolf's Law of form follows function is known to all of us, and it's been around for a long time. Um, but in the 90s, NASA actually was using vibration for astronauts who were in space for a long time to maintain bone density, and that was a critical part of the treatment. Uh, that was used for them to keep them healthy in space. So NASA used it, and what was discovered by NASA is not all vibration is equal. So let's talk about that situation. First, here's, again, New York U, uh, significantly greater osteogenic activity. With low-frequency vibration, we got a certain amount of bone activity, cellular activity. High-frequency, nearly double as much. Uh, low frequency, effective, uh, also significantly greater tooth movement. Why? Because there's more cells. And prolonged osteoclastic activity in the presence of orthodontic forces was also demonstrated at NYU in their studies using the uh, VPro5 system. Osteoblastic activity with VPro5, superior performance going on, and this is you know, obviously comparing Excelident to VPro5 itself. And aligner seating, 
was always greater in the studies, again, done at NYU, showed at seven days and so forth, that the, the seeding of the aligners was much higher. So, you know, these results are kind of supporting what we've discovered in our office and in our prospective study at Illinois. Also found in, at NYU was that there's an increased rate of tooth movement when you use vibration acceleration. So this stuff works. And there was also a reduction in the studies at NYU uh, in orthodontic discomfort. As you can see, uh, control groups versus V Pro 5 groups, significantly reduction in discomfort over time in orthodontic treatment. So the conclusions of many of the NYU studies and Harvard studies are that VPRO5 can improve accuracy while reducing interval between or liner changes. VPRO5 will significantly reduce pain and discomfort, which is a nice thing. It's a practice builder. And it's good. it does so because it increases bone remodeling markers and cytokinins. Interestingly, with braces, similar results were shown were in any in cases where on, on one side of the mouth they use uh, the uh, vibration device and the other there was a significant difference in the in the movement of teeth and interestingly there was a reduction in root resorption in the in University of Alberta study where the with aligner the cases there you know it's not that aligner led to that much root resorption, uh, less than a half a millimeter, but in the presence of high frequency vibration, the reduction was, all, it was almost none. That's the positive thing. Pain reduction, again, the, the studies that are out there are showing a significant reduction in pain versus control using high frequency vibration. And as you would expect with what I've been describing, with VPRO5, the number of aligners that were prescribed or planned in a ClinCheck on a case actually became the actual number one number of aligners that were used. Why? Because there's a reduction of a significant degree in, in, in cases that have uh, misalignment, uh, that, that, that have uh, teeth that are unseating. Okay. So, those cases without obviously always required more aligners. What does that mean to your practice? How about reduction in treatment time? Well, if you're using less aligners, you're going to treat patients faster. If you're using more aligners, it's going to take longer. So that is a significant finding for the vibration device in use with aligners. Well, I'm sad to say that VPRO5 doesn't exist anymore. It's been replaced by a newer, better model called the VPRO Plus. And the advantages or the improvements of VPRO Plus are what you see on this slide. With VPRO Plus, another big positive thing is it's got an intuitive patient app where the patients download on their phone an app and the information that is tracking the use of it and so forth can be sent to us by the patient using the app and via email. And it saves us time at the chair having to take their device and download the information on patient usage with the device and so forth. That's a big plus. And some other advantages, breakage is nearly a thing of the past, which has been a big thing with the vibration devices in the marketplace. Uh, there's better and easier tracking. Time saved at the chair is significant. Time is money. The unit is waterproof, so if somebody wanted to use it in the shower, they could. So let me summarize my thoughts on VPRO Plus. We now use VPRO Plus on all of our aligner cases. Why? It's frankly, to eliminate unseats. And we're having our patients change their aligners every four days. Now think about your practice. What could that mean for you in terms of speed of treatment? and the number of aligners, the number of refinements that are necessary, what can this mean in the profitability of a case? It allows our practice to compete in, in a very competitive world, not only with other orthodontists, but with direct-to-consumer type of treatment, where we can provide superior care at what would be a competitive price, and we couldn't do it without this device. We use VPRO Plus on selected bracket cases. Which ones would those be? adults that want less pain and faster treatment. In our practice, we do something that a lot don't do. Our cost is actually built into our fee. 
And we find that it, even though the device is free, and, and a lot of people say if it's free, it doesn't have much value, our consumers use it. They use it five minutes a day. Why? Because they want faster treatment. And they know when they don't use it because when they don't use it, their teeth are sore as compared to when they don't. Now, if you're going to use a device like this, it requires systems changes in your office in order to implement it. So what I'm going to talk to you about is things that we're doing differently in our office. And I'm going to begin by talking about who does what. In order for this system to be of value uh, to the patient, we need to explain to them what it is and what's in it for them. And that's the job in our office of the front desk and treatment coordinators. And they spend five minutes in an exam appointment explaining that this is a device we provide to our patients. It's at no charge. And what are the benefits to them? This is to engender and enlist their support, their enthusiasm, their excitement. The chair sides have a job with the system, too. They have to charge the unit in advance so that it can be used and given to the patient and they can practice while in the office. They need to download the necessary information so that the information can be sent to us via email in terms of utilization. And this is going to take about five minutes of chairside time when the patient begins treatment. For billing, you know, there is no additional change in our office because for us, the cost is built into the fee. And as I said, many practices charge for the device. But my view is very simply the last bullet point, which is less time in treatment, fewer visits, fewer refinements. It's a no brainer to give them something that costs the, the price of a, a V-Pro5 unit. So that's how we operate, you know, and each doctor can choose to use the device as they will. So having covered the subject as we have on accelerated orthodontics, I want to talk a little bit about MOP, micro osteo perforation. Our journey began in early 2016 with MOP. And quite honestly, it was slow in adoption in our practice. You know, we weren't sure when to use it, how to use it, where to use it, what would the, let's say the patient response to it what would be the post-op response to it. So we kind of took it slow and we were very, very selective on the patients that we would use it on. Uh, now we use it extensively. And you might say, okay, what pa patients would benefit from micro osteoperforation? We do a lot of expansion mechanics in our office. You know, our practice is a bioprogressive practice. We use expansion for arch length. We use expansion to eliminate dark corners. We use expansion uh, to improve a smile. So there's all kinds of reasons for us to use expansion mechanics. And in adults, you can't pop the palate. In kids, we pop the palate quite frequently in a high percentage of cases. But adults, we've lost the ability for sutural expansion. What we do use with microosteal perforation is we get alveolar process development in width. It allows us to treat a high percentage of adult patients, non-extraction, with a better smile. And those are cases that are ideal for MOP. We use it to develop bone and extraction sites. You know, you, we all have patients that have had extractions a long time ago and they've got a knife edge ridge. We're using MOP to develop that ridge so that we can move teeth through it and close spaces and so forth. We use it for pain moderation. You know, adults tend to be more of a baby than kids. And so we use this device very effectively for the patients who want to have treatment but don't want to, you know, undergo the dis disadvantages of discomfort. A big part of what we use it for is anchorage considerations. You know, picture an extraction case that's maximum anchorage. And let's say it's a class two case that you decided to take out upper first buys. The last thing you want is to have the upper posterior teeth move forward. So what we do is use micro osteoperforation to, to create accelerated movement of the anterior teeth and we don't, don't use it at all in the posterior teeth. So we're actually improving anchorage as treatment planning of cases by applying MOP where it's appropriate. The net for us is when we use MOP in these adult patients, we're getting faster treatment. And we like that, and our patients like that. 
Well, how does MOP work anyway? I explain it to patients and to colleagues. I call it Wilkodonic Simplify. Uh, one of the things that we did at Illinois is our residents got all excited about Wilkodonics when it first came out. And we were doing a lot of Wilkodonics on patients. And I thought it was you know, a, a very significant procedure for patients. Well, compare that to MOP, where you basically place these little dimples in the bone and it's done in the office very simply without injection of anesthesia or anything like that. It works very nicely. And the objective of Wilkodonics or MOP is to create inflammation. Why do we want inflammation? Because inflammation leads to more cells. In response, more cells allow faster movement of teeth and more bone. And those are the things we use MOP for. Well, what's the clinical evidence on that? Best thing I can just suggest is get this book, which is basically written about MOP. And it's a university curriculum, and you'll find lots of good information there on MOP. There's also some great articles, again, in the orthodontic literature. Uh, this one shows MOP uh, treatment on one side of the mouth, and contralaterally, there's no MOP. And look at the amount of tooth movement uh, in, on one side versus the other. This stuff works. How about toleration? You know, how well tolerated is MOP? Uh, this this particular study shows that you know the pain assessment immediately after after activation with MOP, 24 hours and so forth, and there's no difference in discomfort between the groups. So what does it really say? With MOP, it's not a traumatic procedure for patients. In fact, in the years we've been using it, our patients never complain about a post-op problem, complications, soreness, or anything else. So, summarizing a little bit, MOPs have been shown in studies, and here's one from AJO, as effective, well-tolerated, and safe procedures to accelerate tooth movement during orthodontic treatment. And I would add to that to also develop bone where you need bone in treatment of a case. And it can reduce orthodontic treatment time by 60% according to this AJO study. This is the kind of case that's perfect for MOP. We all see it all day long. Extraction a long time ago, knife edge ridge, you know, you want to close the space. How are you going to do it? In fact, this ridge is not even suitable for placement of an implant. Well, we use MOP in this kind of case to develop ridge, and it works. And, and this, this slide kind of shows where, where the perforations would be done. And it's great for, for implants, grafting, et cetera, et cetera. Now, Propel sells two different MOP devices. First one's called Accelerator RT. What is Accelerator RT? Well, it's a manual device where you can use the, the, the device with hand turning of the screw at the, at the pace that you desire, at the pressure you desire. There's two different tips that can be used and so forth. Um, I'm talking like I don't have much experience with the accelerator, and that's because I don't. Our office chose to go with the Accelerator PT, a power tip driven device, and we just love it. The procedure is so fast, so simple, so easy. Uh, at the cases and the, and the places where we choose to use it, and the device works very, very nicely. So, you know, if you're thinking about MOP and I'd encourage it, I would suggest you get the power tip driver. And we're gonna go on a little bit more in explaining all of this. I've heard some doctors say, well, who needs, you know, this device from Propel? Why not just a burr? Well, when you do things with a burr, you're going to get adverse effects. First thing is a burr is going to create heat, and heat leads to necrosis, and we want the opposite of that. We don't want dead cells. We want live cells, and we want more of them. Uh, you can also, with a drill, <laughs> yeah, you have to be real good at, at your aim with a drill. If you're off in your aim, you can drill right through the root of a tooth. One of the nice things about MOP that I, I'm hoping everybody in the audience can understand is that with MOP and, and without, you know, injected anesthesia and so forth, you're going to know when you get near the root of a tooth, the patient's going to let you know. 
Now, you're, long before you do damage, let's say, to the cementum of a tooth, that patient will let you know that your, your angle of your perforation is wrong. If you use a burr, it's too quick, too late, too late. Uh, you need to worry about irrigation because you've got necrotic tissue, soft tissue trauma. All of these things are not even a problem with MOP and the device that, that is available to you. Now, the next slide down, as you see on this slide, is uh, healing. We're amazed at how fast a patient heals with MOP. When we do, let's say, a quadrant of MOP, there's initially bleeding, which you would expect. And what we typically do, and we usually do several quadrants at a time, we'll do the upper arch and maybe the upper and lower all at the same time. As we finish a quadrant, we simply place a cotton roll in the mouth and let it absorb, let's say, any blood that may be coming out of the, the puncture wound, the dimple, as we call it, in the bone. Uh, by the time we get the next quadrant done, that area typically isn't bleeding anymore. So the, yes, there is some bleeding immediately after, but it ends very quickly. And as you can see in this slide, five minutes later, you can hardly even tell where the puncture is, where the MOP was done. Now, I've heard some doctors talk about, well, who needs this Propel device for you know, drilling a hole in the bone? Let's just use a TAD. You know, we can screw in a TAD just like we can screw in the Propel tip. Well, there's a difference between tips. One is tapered, one is not. To get the same effect with a TAD, you have to put it in deeper. And if you put it in deeper, TADs are, are subject to fracture and so forth. You know, why, in my mind, why use a TAD when you can use the, the proper device? And quite honestly, I use the motorized device because it's so fast, so efficient, so easy, and no complications. The depth that you're going to have to go for the same width of perforation, which will affect the number of cells that are created from the perforation, is going to be very different because the TAD is tapered and the MOP device is not. So here's some FAQs on MOP. Studies have shown the effective region of, of cellular perforation or cellular proliferation is six to 10 millimeter radius around each perforation. So as you kind of plan doing MOP, you have to plan on how many of these dimples are we gonna put in the bone, how close are they together and so forth. And kind of an easy rule of thumb to remember is you got six to 10 millimeter radius around each. When I wanna maximize cells, I'll put more holes. If I, if I don't need to maximize cells, I put less holes, but I always keep in mind that 6 to 10 millimeter radius uh, as a rule. The benefits is, is explained in the next bullet point. Remodeling is proportional to insult. So the more insult, the more, bones you're going, the more cells you're going to get in the bone. How deep? You know, what we're doing in our office basically is we're going deep. The, the objective is to get through the cortical bone and perforate it into the medullary bone. And that typically is about three millimeters. That's our experience. Kind of look at this slide. I want to talk about it for a minute because it kind of shows how we use MOP in various ways. In the posterior of the upper, we always do two perforations between at each interproximal. We've got a panorex there to use as a guide so we can see where the roots are, so we can you know avoid the roots as we do the MOP. In, in a case where I, I want maxillary expansion, you'll picture the adult patient that's got a narrow maxilla and I want to expand it to improve the smile. This would be, as you see in the upper left, the where I would do perforations, but I also do the perforations mesial to the canine as well. So if I want to expand the maxilla with the crossbite for an improved smile, that's where we put our perforation holes. Moving to the right side on the top, this is where I'm putting perforations. If I'm, I'm looking to, let's say, move a lateral that's palatal out into place, we might use this, this kind of perforation on upper laterals that are a problem tooth in Invisalign treatment. 
and as we all know, upper laterals are a problem tooth. And if we can help those teeth move more efficiently with less force, uh, we're gonna get a more effective result. Lower left shows perforations that would be placed, let's say in canine retraction in a, in a uh, extraction case. If you want to first retract the canines and then retract the incisors, basically it's a matter of perforations on either side of the canine. Far right on the bottom is where we would place perforations in the case that's got a lot of severe lower crowding and we're going to treat it non-extraction. We, we want to develop labial alveolar bone, you know, where the bone is very thin and friable, you've got washboarding effect. This is where we might do MOP in that kind of case so that we can get arch alignment without expansion uh, and do it in a way that's physiologic and, and the tissues are healthy at the end. So, you know, kind of put this kind of... Now, this slide shows the depth that is indicated or appropriate if you're going to use MOP. Here's how we do MOP in our office. Here's how we schedule it, how, the, how we time it as a clinical procedure and the front desk, how they book it as a procedure. When a patient comes in for an MOP procedure, the first thing is the doctor is going to reconfirm the need for treatment. And uh, why reconfirm? Well, the original treatment plan calls for MOP and when we do it, we will always do it twice. We find sometimes after the first procedure that we get the development of the bone that we want and we don't need a second one. So step one is the doctor takes a quick look, says, yes, let's do the procedure or no, we won't. And also the doctor at that time was looking at the Panorax to make sure that we've got uh, proper, you know, we, we can figure out exactly where we want the perforations, how many, the angulation and so forth. So assume two minutes for that. The patient then does a chlorhexidine rinse and, and brushes and so forth to prepare the tissues for the procedure. We want to have as sterile a, a work area as possible. So the brushing, the rinse, is to kind of create as much sterility as we can for this procedure. Then the patient is seated and the anesthesia is done. And Propel recommends an anesthesia that works really, really well. It's very profound. You place it and as you leave it on for a while, but here's a, a, a pearl for you. You know, if you leave it on for, let's say, I think it's seven minutes, you don't start working seven minutes. You actually give it seven more minutes for the profound anesthesia that will come, which is 99% of the time quite adequate to allow for the MOP procedure to be done. We always have a Matajet ready to use in a case where a patient doesn't have the kind of profound anesthesia we want, but we rarely use the Manajet. If we do, it's usually mesial to the upper canines, somehow that, uh, or sometimes distal upper canines. That area tends to be an area that doesn't uh, get as good an anesthesia as other parts of the mouth. But the topical that is recommended is very, very good. While a patient is undergoing the anesthesia after placement of the material, that patient is going to be sitting in the chair and the chair side is looking for something to do. So after they've rinsed out and gotten rid of the topical that has been placed in there to anesthetize the tissues, our chair sides go to work and do the day's adjustment so that when the MOP procedure is finished, the patient literally leaves. They're done. So number four, finally, at the end of the procedure, I arrive and I do the MOP. And the MOP is very fast, is very efficient. It's, it's actually is very casual. First thing we have to do is check for profound anesthesia. And what do we do? I take an explorer and I really stick it hard into the area where I anticipate I'm gonna be doing my perforation. And I tell the patient, you should feel it, but it shouldn't hurt. If it hurts, you let me know. And nine out of 10 times they feel that that doesn't hurt. That rare case where they don't, we have a Matajet ready. I just give in that one specific spot, I give them a shot with the Matajet. So that's kind of our clinical procedure in a nutshell. 
This is the power-driven MOP system we use. And this slide kind of illustrates the process. You know, picture, I think this is, has to be a four-handed dentistry type of thing. I can't imagine a doctor doing this by himself or herself. First thing you need to know is this area here allows you to turn this head at any degree to the handle. My objective is I have turned this thing so that this part is readily accessible to the chair side. She is gonna be pushing buttons while I'm working. My job is gonna be holding the tip at the angle that I want in the location that I want. And yet while I'm doing that, and my focus is in the mouth right here, where that tip is and what direction it's going, I am commanding to my assistant to do whatever the assistant needs to do, which is, I tell her, go, she turns it on, okay? And then I'm watching the tip go in, and when it goes into the depth, and you can feel it pop through the cortical bone into the medullary bone. When you can feel it pop through, I will say stop, reverse, go, which means the, re the screw is just reversed and is unscrewing itself. When I see I'm freed from the bone, I say stop, Reverse, which means it's going forward again. I move the tip to a new, clay, new location. I say go. I watch the tip. I say stop. Reverse. If the tip comes free from the bone, I say stop. Reverse. And it's a process like that that goes as fast as I'm describing it. And that's why I can do MOP, let's say, a bunch of holes in a maxilla in like three minutes and it works very efficiently very efficiently and this is a patient of ours we're 10 minutes after mop and we're expanding the maxilla it's an invisalign case we're expanding the maxilla using invisalign and look at how healthy the tissues look 10 minutes later post-treatment Sensitivity, I tell patients, could be no different from an orthodontic adjustment, but the fact is most of them tell me they don't feel anything. And those who do, 24, 48 hours, they're fine. Now, what's important for post-treatment is do not give them NSAIDs. NSAIDs are non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. What is the purpose of MOP? We want inflammation. Inflammation creates cells. The cells are our friend. If we give patients NSAIDs, <laughs> we're defeating the purpose of doing MOP at all. So we tell patients, if there is discomfort, we only want you to do Tylenol. So let me kind of summarize what I've been talking about. We use MOP mostly on non-growers, those that need bone development, and we use it for anchorage considerations where we want to minimize anchorage in one segment while allowing the, the natural bone to be anchorage in another segment. Billing. We bill MOP as a separate fee from our treatment fee. So when I see a patient that's suitable for this, I, I will dictate to my TC that we're going to do MOP here. That's a signal to the TC that there is an additional charge for MOP. We use CDT procedure codes that are, are actually amazingly effective in getting paid for this procedure. And you'll see in the next slide how we do that. To make it palatable to patients, because I want them to have this procedure done. We tell them their only responsibility on the MOP is 10%. We will build the insurance for the rest. And if we don't get paid by insurance, we won't make you pay the difference. If we get less than the other 90% from the insurance, it does make any difference. We won't make you pay it. And we will charge back the difference. Now, why are we willing to do that? Well, MOP is gonna allow me to get better results. It's gonna allow me to get better results faster. And on that, and on, I would say more than 60% of our cases, we're gonna get an additional fee for the procedure. So to me, it's a no brainer to take this low key, inexpensive approach with patients and they're gonna benefit and I'm gonna benefit. So let's talk about systems changes that are necessary with MOP. Front desk has much the same job 
in explaining things with MOP as they would with the V Pro Plus. Uh, basically, they have to explain what are the benefits, treatment time reduction, better results, less pain, et cetera, et cetera. So their job is to elaborate on the fact that I've recommended this as part of their treatment. Typically, we schedule the procedure twice on these adult patients. And the first one is not, the first time they do the procedure is not the day we place appliances. That patient's had enough when we place the appliances in the first wire, but it'll be the visit after appliance placement. And then the second time that we do it, and it's usually two times for patients, will be three months later. And usually those two bouts with MOP will give me the effect that I want to have a far superior result in less time. That's the thing that we fill out. Basically, we fill out, the, my job is to fill this out and the patient's name and front desk takes it from there. These are the CDT codes that are necessary for the procedure that's going to be done. And these are the fees that we're going to charge. Now, you might say, well, where'd those fees come from? Frankly, <laughs> I, I know what the periodontists in our area charge for a similar type of treatment, and that's their charge. And the dentist in the area that I work with, when I talked about using the MOP, they said, that's okay, but don't you dare charge less than what is the going rate, because if you charge less, it'll bring the fee schedule for the whole community down. So I want you to charge what the periodontist charges. So for us, that's what a periodontist would charge for these kinds of procedure. That's what we charge. And as I said before, they put 10% down, we bill insurance, and if we don't get paid the balance, we don't get paid. I don't care. What's the chair side's job? It's a 40 minute appointment. I kind of outline what happens over the 40 minutes. True total doctor time is usually five minutes, if not less. A key thing is how we approach it and how we explain it to patients. It's an easy, casual appointment. It is not traumatic. This is like so easy as falling off a log. We let patients know this. We put them at ease. We tell them we've done hundreds of them. We've never had a problem. Mm -hmm. We guarantee it's not going to hurt because I got the Matajet if, if they feel anything when I really stick them with that Explorer. And there's no complications, no shots. That's how we win patient acceptance for this. Now, I've talked about a lot over the course of the last few minutes, and I'm sure there are questions uh, about protocols and procedures and so forth. So our office is made available to Propel for you, uh, our protocols for use of MOP and also VPRO Plus. You're welcome to get them from, from the people at Propel. No sense reinventing the wheel. We've taken the time over three years to do it, refine systems from explanation of the problem to treatment of the problem. So don't reinvent the wheel. And with that, it's time for questions. Okay, Dr. Selke, we've got one question in already. Um, if people are ready, they can type in questions right into the questions chat area. Um, the first question we have up is, what about root resorption? Well, if the question is root resorption with accelerated orthodontics, the one New York University study shows that there is actually less root resorption with the vibration device than there is without in specifically in aligner cases. I'm not aware of a study that shows root resorption pro or con in braces cases but there is clinical evidence to show less root resorption with the uh, vibration device. In terms of root resorption with micro osteoperforation, there should be absolutely no difference at all. <laughs> the only time you might have an adverse effect on the root is if you come in contact with the root with your MOP device. But I will tell you from experience, if, if you come in contact with the root, the patient will let you know, and you're not going to do any damage to the cementum that could be a source of root resorption on that patient. In my experience, not a problem. 
I would tell anyone who's listening, you know, if you'd like more information, not only can you get it through Propel, but you're welcome to contact me at my office and we'll be happy to, you know, work with you, provide you information. Not a problem at all. You know, I appreciate that you've taken the time to listen to this webinar and I hope you found it informative of value and I hope it encourages you to, to take the plunge and do it. Um, I have found it extremely valuable in treatment. I found it extremely valuable treatment results as well as treatment time. Okay, we've got another question here. Are you using MOPs on impactions? Have not used them on impactions. I know that's one of the indications for it, but I have not done so. Okay, uh, another question here. How much do you increase your fee to include V plus? How much do we increase our speed with V with uh, uh, your fee? Oh, with fee. We don't change our fee at all. Um, my view is this: these technologies, whether it be MOP or vibration technology, are going to allow me to treat a patient faster, significantly faster, in fewer visits. Faster, fewer visits is a practice builder. The word gets around. They get the word gets around about the technology that you're using that no one else is using. The word gets around that you're treating patients better, faster, and that's a practice builder. And to me, not only am I making more money per case with fewer visits, but I'm building a reputation within the community that I'm using a tool no one else is using that's gonna give patients a better result in less time. So I don't charge extra. Great, so that seems like that's the end of our questions. Okay. Um, actually, it looks like one more. Do you ever use vibration and mops for the same patient? We've done it on a, on a number of adult patients. You know, picture you wanna use mop with uh, a a, a, the, the classic for us is a maxilla that's narrow and we want to widen it, especially in the bicuspid area where you get a better arch form, a better smile. Uh, we will use that with, with either braces or brackets in adult patients where we're developing bone and why not use vibration device too to accelerate the tooth movement and to reduce discomfort to the adult patients. Wonderful. Well, that looks like that was our last question. All righty. Thank you all for your time. I really appreciate it. I hope you've gotten value and keep in touch.